This thing has become huge. Growing calls to pull taxpayer dollars from National Public Radio after NPR fires Juan Williams. James Rosen in Washington with the very latest. Fast moving. It is. It's still evolving. The latest news on this, Neil, is that House Minority Leader John Boehner has just issued a statement suggesting that NPR should perhaps not receive taxpayer funding. All this in light of the network's decision to terminate Juan Williams as a, new, a news analyst late last night. That decision was prompted, the network said, by these comments that Williams made Monday night in one of his frequent appearances on The O'Reilly Factor. I mean, look, Bill, I'm not a bigot. You know the kind of books I've written about the civil rights movement in this country. But when I get on a plane, I got to tell you, if I see people who are in Muslim garb, and I think, you know, they're identifying themselves first and foremost as Muslims, I get worried. I get nervous. But that wasn't all Williams said. As NPR's own reporter noted on the story, Williams, quote, warned O'Reilly not to judge all Muslims or all people of any given faith by the extremists among them. And it makes it easier for them to come up with this kind of crazy stuff that, well, you can't really say the Muslims attack us on 9 11. No, but what like, Barbara you know, Walter they said Norwegians? to you. Norwegians? I mean, come no, on. No, but what, wait a second. No, wait, wait, hold on. Because if you said, what, Timothy McVeigh, the Atlanta bomber, these people who are protesting against homosexuality at military funerals, very obnoxious, you don't say first and foremost, we got a problem with Christians. That, because that's it crazy. Did, but it's not at that level. It doesn't rise near Correct. to that level. That's, and, and when you said in the Talking Points memo a moment ago that there are good Muslims. I think that's a point, you know. This afternoon, Fox News obtained an internal memo that NPR president and CEO Vivian Schiller sent today from her handheld wireless device to NPR stations across the country in which Schiller suggested that her action may have been informed in part by financial considerations. This was a tough decision, Schiller wrote. We're profoundly sorry that this happened during fundraising week. We did not feel it would be responsible to delay this action. A critical distinction has been lost in this debate, Schiller continued. NPR news analysts have a distinctive role and set of responsibilities. They may not take personal public positions on controversial issues. NPR's ethics code states that NPR journalists should not participate in shows that encourage punditry and speculation rather than fact-based analysis. This isn't the first time we have had serious concerns about some of Juan's public comments, Schiller added. Despite many conversations and warnings over the years, Juan has continued to violate this principle. Schiller, as it happens, was today's featured speaker at the Atlanta Press Club's Newsmaker Luncheon, where she reiterated those points. She also said her decision was not anti-Fox and that NPR wasn't singling Juan Williams out. This is not a reflection on his comments. This is not a debate. You know, Ron, Juan feels the way he feels. That is not for me to, ju to pass judgment on. That is really his feelings that he expressed on Fox News are really between him and his, you know, psychiatrist or his publicist or, or take your pick. Um, but it is not compatible with a news analyst on, and with, with the role of a news analyst on NPR's air. Later, Schiller apologized for the psychiatrist's comment, saying that was thoughtless and that she had spoken in haste, and she apologized to Juan Williams. Now, the NPR executive who actually carried out Williams' firing was Ellen Weiss, senior vice president for news at the network. Williams recounted that moment to Fox News earlier today. Wednesday afternoon, I got a message on my cell phone from Ellen Weiss, who's the head of news at NPR asking me to call. When I called back, she said, what did you say? What did you mean to say? And I said, I said what I meant to say, which is that it's an honest experience that when I'm in an airport and I see people who are in Muslim garb, who identify themselves first and foremost as Muslims, I do a double take. I have a moment of anxiety or fear given what happened on 9-11. That's just a reality. And uh, she went on to say, well, that crosses the line. And I said, what line is that? And uh, she, she went on to su somehow suggest that I had made a bigoted statement. And I said, it's not a bigoted statement. I, in fact, in the course of this conversation with Bill O'Reilly, said that we have, as Americans, an obligation to be careful to protect constitutional rights of everyone in the country and to make sure we don't have any outbreak of bigotry, but that there's a reality. You cannot ignore what happened on 9-11, and you cannot ignore the connection to Islamic radicalism, and you can't ignore the fact of what was, has been even recently said in court with regard to this as the first drop of blood in a Muslim war in America. Uh, and then she said, you know, this has been decided up the chain. I said, you mean I don't even get the chance to come in and we do this eyeball to eyeball, person to person, have a conversation? I've been there for more than 10 years. 
we don't have that chance to have a conversation about this. And she said, there's nothing you can say that would change my mind. This has been decided above me, and we're terminating your contract. NPR's website has at least 2,000 comments from people disapproving of its decision. On foxnews.com slash opinion, you can find a piece that has just been posted minutes ago. It is written by Juan Williams, and it's entitled, I Was Fired for Telling the Truth. Neil. Indeed, it is up there right now. James, thank you very much. James Rosen. Well, Carl Rove has had enough of this, says that NPR shouldn't get a dime of taxpayer cash. Uh, it gets a lot of dimes, though, Carl. It sure does. Look, uh, Juan Williams, I know him. Uh, I admire him. He's a liberal. We, he and I have had c debates on college campuses. We don't agree on a lot of issues, but I respect the cast of his mind, his integrity, and the, and the fact that he's a liberal with whom you can have a rational discussion. NPR has been, you know, sort of increasingly more left-wing, and it's represented an increasingly smaller, uh, you know, sort of left-wing opinion, range of liberal opinions. And today, by firing Juan Williams, they have demonstrated that they've become even more left-wing, even more narrow, and even even more politically correct. James Toronto had a wonderful piece on WallStreetJournal.com today where he said, you know what, NPR would never have fired Juan Williams for expressing liberal opinions like when he's raised questions about he's accused Republicans of going overboard on believing that uh, uh, President Obama is not really an American and that he's really a Manchurian candidate and that he favors blacks over whites. I mean, they would never file it, fire him for expressing a liberal opinion by love like that, but when they step outside their political correctness, they slap him down and fired him. Shame on on national public radio. It doesn't deserve a dime of the people's money. It's been increasingly left-wing, and now it's gone completely cuckoo politically correct. Uh, how shame on them for having taken this man who worked for them for 10 years and firing him in a phone call by a, by, by a woman who obviously, you know, was trying to say, me no Alamo, not my responsibility, the decision <laughs> made elsewhere. You know, one thing hit me, Carl, while I was looking at the O'Reilly segment. Um, on this network, on this air, we allow challenging opinions. In fact, we welcome them. And with our big kahuna talent, like Bill O'Reilly, and I've been on his show many times, um, I can argue with it. You can argue with sure. it. Sure. Uh, in fact, he particularly welcomes it. And there's no one that sanctions anyone pussyfooting around it. The same with guests on this show and what have you. Um, so we allow and, and, in fact, endorse and mightily prescribe to the view a fair and balanced mix of ideas. It just seems to me that those who say we do not have a tough time dealing with the same issue within their own shops. Yeah, look, National Public Radio, I, I, did, I did a book tour earlier this year on my book. The most outrageously left-wing questions I got was from a you know, for National Public Radio reporter. I mean, in, in incredibly left-wing, incredibly argumentative. They wouldn't have disciplined her. I mean, she was saying, suggesting things that were just cuckoo left-wing, and they wouldn't discipline her. But well, remember, you, you are remember that, you're Lucifer in the embodiment of evil. You've got to remember exactly, that, Carl. Exactly. Exactly. And sometimes you forget. Well, I've got to give. That's right. And and I forget that Juan Williams is a nice guy, and you know, no, look, this 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 proves that the. National public radio is national progressive radio. In fact, in fact, national left-wing progressive radio, and it should not be funded by the taxpayers when they become so ideologically rigid that they can't even take reasonable liberal opinion and 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 represent it among their among their analysts. But you know, you, real quickly, you mentioned something very profound, as you always do. And one was, if these were politically correct opinions, I wager to say, just like you, that one would still have his job. Well, look, and, and, and Juan occasionally has him. I mean, when he goes out and says Republicans are going overboard, they think to, you know, all, there are a lot of Republicans who don't like Obama because they think he favors blacks over whites or that he's not really an American or that he's the Manchurian candidate, you know, belittles people for believing that he's a socialist. That is a conventional left-wing opinion and is politically correct. And they would never think of firing him for that. They didn't call him in and say, you're out of here, buddy, for that. They took an opinion that was outside the narrow range of what they consider to be politically acceptable and they got him for that. And incidentally, it wasn't my thought. I read this in a column, uh, a posting by James Toronto, who has really got an interesting mind and well worth a lot of people reading, and he was the one who made this point. I think I totally agree with it, though. I totally agree with it. I think you did on Carl Rove, thank you. And I got a little project for folks back home here. Um, I want you to watch our network very, very closely, and I want you to watch our big talent very, very closely. And I want you to see how we welcome on fellow talent, fellow talent, to come on and challenge whoever the big kahuna du jour is of the hour. Then, then 
I want you to switch around and see if others do the same. Report back to me. Meanwhile, Juan Williams will be back on the O'Reilly Factor tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Now to this.